us proclaim the gospel of the kingdom and cured every disease among the people. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. Again, Jesus left the district of Tyre and went by way of Sidon to the Sea of Galilee into the district of the Decapolis. And people brought to him a deaf man who had a speech impediment and begged him to lay his hands on him. He took him off by himself away from the crowd. He put his finger into the man's ears and, spitting, touched his tongue. Then he looked up to heaven and groaned and said to him, Ephetha, that is, be opened. And immediately the man's ears were opened, his speech impediment was removed, and he spoke plainly. He ordered them not to tell anyone, but the more he ordered them not to, the more they proclaimed it. They were exceedingly astonished, and they said, He has done all things well. He makes the deaf hear, and the mute speak. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. An older gentleman went to visit his doctor after having received a hearing aid, a very, very specific and uh, professional kind of hearing aid. And when he went to the doctor, the doctor asked him, how is your hearing? How is it working? And he says, doc, the hearing aid is perfect. I'm hearing 100% of everything that is out there to be heard. The doctor said to the man, Your wife and your family must be thrilled that you are now able to hear them and to participate in the conversations of the household. The old gentleman looked at the doctor and said, Oh, I haven't told them yet. (laughs) He says, I'm enjoying hearing what they have to say without them knowing that I can. He says, in fact, I've changed my will three times in recent weeks. Whether with a hearing aid or without, many wives and many children will accuse their fathers and their husbands of selective hearing. It's not something that afflicts only men, although we get the benefit of that in jokes usually. Selective hearing is something that that all of us suffer from, uh, and I think it's very endemic in our society today. We want to listen to only the things that we find important, the things that are congruent with what we believe, or the actions we want to take, or the plan that we have for our lives. It doesn't make any difference whether one is on the right or on the left, whether they listen to fake news or real news. The reality is we only hear what we want to hear. And that's a problem. It's a problem because we're much more apt, whether on Facebook or other social media, or in the few conversations that we actually do have that don't involve typing on a phone, we're much more apt to express our opinion, get our word out there, make sure that we are heard, even though we do not listen. Selective hearing is a problem. And it comes, I think, from a very specific issue. And that is fear. Because if we actually take the time to listen, we might have to change. We might actually have to 
look at our plans or our opinions or the things that we value and see that they need to be transformed. Perhaps even who we think we are might need to be changed. And that frightens us. In the Old Testament reading this morning from the book of the prophet Isaiah, we hear the people on their way back to Jerusalem. Remember, they were in captivity in Babylon. And many people stayed behind. But a faithful remnant heard God's call to return through the prophets, heard the call to return to their city of Jerusalem. What they didn't think about as they left Babylon and the comforts they experienced there was that for decades now, their homeland had been occupied by new residents. And so as they approached the city of Jerusalem and they saw these encampments, they were filled with fear. Why? Because they were not listening. They forgot, as God had demonstrated so many times in the history of his people, that he was their savior. That's why we hear this reading every single season of Advent, because it announces God is the Messiah, the one who saves. So much so that he can make water come up out of the desert. He can make the mute speak, the deaf hear, the lame walk. That's the power he has to transform if only we trust in him. And so the people of Israel, in making their pilgrimage back to Jerusalem, thought they had to do it themselves. And that's why they were afraid. But God had so many times revealed that he would fight their battles. He would take up their cause. And if they would listen to him, open their hearts and trust in him, what they didn't believe could happen actually would indeed. When Jesus is presented with this deaf mute in the gospel, you can only imagine the symbolism of this man, trapped in the silence of a world where he cannot hear and therefore cannot speak. The man had to rely on others every day of his life, whether it was sitting by the gate and begging for whatever someone would throw at him, or whether family and friends actually took care of him. He had to rely on others. And so he's the perfect candidate to demonstrate to the people our need to do likewise. And so when Jesus takes him, look at the care that he gives to him. So as not to embarrass him, he takes him away, and Mark recounts the rituals involved in this man's healing that Jesus, the Savior, touched his ears, that he spit, which was an ancient sign of casting out evil, and touched his tongue, so that salvation would come at that moment into this man's life and allow him to hear and to speak. And when he does so eloquently, those who witness this miracle are themselves transformed. They cannot help but realize that salvation is in their midst, that Jesus is their Lord and Savior. And despite the fact that he tells them to be quiet, they have no choice other than to announce what they have experienced and to name him as their Lord and Savior. The spiritual awakening that happened in those people is intentional. It is also, in Mark's Gospel, symbolic of something very interesting. Because to this point in the Gospel, the apostles, the followers of Jesus, are not yet able to hear and understand. And nor are they able to confess Jesus as their Lord as their Savior. And so the message 
should not be lost on us either. What fear is it that causes you not to hear God's word? And in not hearing God's word prevents you from speaking, not just with your tongue, but with your lives, the witness of who you believe Jesus to be. You see, in our polarized society, in our darkened world, we need witnesses. We don't need more words. We need witnesses. This church should be filled to standing room only with the number of people who call themselves Catholic in Washington Township. But they don't see the authentic witness of followers of Jesus. And so they don't hear the word of God and they're not able then to speak it. We who choose to come and to listen need to listen well so that our hearts may indeed be transformed, so that our words and actions provide that witness that others need. On the day of our baptism, that beautiful word that was preserved in the gospel from Aramaic, Ephatha, was pronounced over each and every one of us. The priest or deacon touching our ears, touching our mouth, And saying that word, be open, trust in God, realize that he is your savior, and that with him nothing, absolutely nothing, is impossible. And then let your words and actions open the hearts and minds of others, that they too might know the freedom of being able to put their trust in Jesus, who is their Lord and Savior as well. That is the witness we need. That is the witness we are called to give.